Well, hello everybody and welcome back to Lisa's Coloring Corner. We are now in March, so I am going to be doing my first color and chat for the Belba Family Color Along, which is called Hashtag Belba in March. I am co-hosting this with Shelly from The Stitching Colorist and with Nikki from Nikki in Niagara, and I will link their channels down below in the description and I promise this time I will remember <laughs> I had a subscriber let me know that in my announcement video I forgot to include their channel so I went back and edited it and added them so I will definitely try to add them <laughs> so I thought for the first picture that we do we would color out of their newest book, which happens to be one of my favorite. That is the Square Mandalas Animals in Patterns. So you can see I've already done a couple of additional pictures for the month of March. So we're just going to go to the next picture in the book because I'm just coloring them all in order. So the next picture is this one. I really like this book because I don't look in the front. And so I have no idea what animal is going to appear in the middle. And many times, boy, it does leave you guessing until you get a lot of it colored in, um, which is really neat as you see it starting to come together and you can actually figure out what it is. Um, what I'm going to color with today is my absolute favorite in these books, doing the X method, and that is my Arteza Ink Onyx. I do have a typed up chart <laughs> of course you know me um, because again all of their books use the exact same color palette throughout all of their color by number books which I love um, I'm not going to do a flip through of this book if you want to see um, the flip through I do have a separate video on um, this book uh, so it would be in my flip throughs playlist so I have my Ink Onyx here in this, uh, this is Arteza's newer line of pencil cases. And I just put them in because they have the wider bands here that you can fit three pencils in. I just put two in an elastic band. And then as a tip, if you guys do do this, um, what I do, out of the 120 set of the Ink Onyx, if it's one that I use in my Belba family uh, color by number books, because I use these so much, I put it upside down. And they're much easier to find because these do not have color names on. They just have the color numbers. Um, and if I have it upside down here, it's just much easier to find which ones that I need for the Belba family. So just a little tip. Um, so we're going to start out with number ones. That's typically what I do. And for number one, I use 135, which is cantaloupe. Now for the lighter colors, I do just start up at the top with my number ones. It seems uh, once I start getting to the darker colors, <laughs> I don't know why this is. And it's just mean, just the way I do things. I typically like to start like number eight. I'll start here on the bottom and work my way up. It just seems like my X's come out better by working upwards rather than down. Again, it's just me. <laughs> so when I made my announcement video, I wasn't sure how boring this was going to be for you guys. But if you're like me, you're not going to actually be watching me coloring as much as you're going to be doing your own thing and just kind of listening, right? At least that's what I'm kind of assuming. And that is kind of the comments that I got. I'm going to also pull out number two so that I have a couple of them out. And number two, I use 105, which is lemon yellow. So I'm going to zoom you guys in because in this first color along, um, I indicated that I was going to show how I do this X method. I've had a couple of questions and it actually is very simple. <laughs> Rather than coloring in the square, you just place an X through each 
square. So like for the number ones here, and I'm going to have to get a little close, so hopefully I don't get my head in the way. You just place an X through each of the ones. And then I kind of just, there's really no rhyme or reason how I do this. I try to go straight across, but then sometimes I end up going down. And that's how a lot of times I miss some. So... I don't know if people realize how hard it is to do a color and chat. <laughs> Try to concentrate on your coloring and talking at the same time. And doing a color by number is actually harder yet. <laughs> and that is why sometimes I screw up. Color something the wrong color or I miss colors. Um, so yeah, so if uh, you see that, oh, Lisa, you missed a number one there, that's kind of why. Although, like I said, I do have a tendency of doing that anyhow, but uh, so yeah, this is all I do, and I realize this is a light color, so maybe you won't be able to see it real well. I think the hardest thing that I have to make this look nice and neat. For some reason, down at the bottom, I have a tendency of not going down far enough. So I guess what I suggest is bring that line down farther than you think you need to. <laughs> and then you'll get to the bottom of the square. At least that's what I found. I don't bring that line down far enough and then you end up you know, not, not covering the square totally, which is not that big of a deal. These light colors end up going down much nicer for some reason. I don't know if it's because you just don't see it as well. <laughs> um, and also, I don't care what fine liner set it is, even these that are so nice, um, it seems like some colors the tip is finer than others. And it seems like in all of the sets, black <laughs> always seems to be a finer tip. And it seems the pens that have the little bit finer tip for some reason, they're still the 0.4, 4, 4, uh, 0 .4 millimeter. Um, but yeah, they just um, seem a little bit finer or not quite as much color for some reason, those seem to be a little bit harder to do the real nice neat X's. Um, but we shall see how we do. Now I always work my X's from left to right, but that's because I'm right-handed. Because as you see, you can just go along where this one ends up, you just bring down the next one. So that's kind of how I go about it. Everybody's going to do theirs a little bit differently, but that is how I do it. You find what works for you. Just like diamond painting, I start in the upper left all the time because, I, again, I am right-handed. But some... Even if they're right-handed, they like to start in the bo bottom right or the bottom left. So again, it's all personal preference. You do what works for you, like I said. So we are just going to go through and do these ones. And I think what I am going to do for this color long, because of course these pictures take a little bit of time to do. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'll do this first, color and chat, see how far we get in like, I don't know, 45 minutes to an hour, what, whatever. Um, and then I am going to do, let me get on camera here, I am going to do some off camera until I feel like, eh, you know, maybe I have, I'll just estimate, of course, but until I feel like I have maybe 
45 minutes to a half an hour left or half hour whatever it's going to be hard to estimate but and then we'll come back together and finish the picture up together now if there's a lot of one color and there's not a whole lot of changing of colors we may be able to get the entire picture done in two color and chats without me doing any off camera so we'll see we'll, we'll just play it by ear each week i am going to be coloring out of a different belba family book now as you can see these these two mandala books this one and the first square mandala book are a little bit smaller and i like the fact that they made these square books a little bit smaller because the mandala can only go so wide right you know it'll go this far out well it can only go that far high too and if you have it a full-size coloring book you're wasting space because you're just going to have white space on the top and the bottom and so i do like mandala books where they do make them square shaped. It just makes more sense. So we're going to continue with these ones. Like I said, these lighter colors, for some reason, I can just zip right through the ones and twos, especially. Number threes. Um, is when you get into beige. Once you start doing these books for a while, you pretty much get the colors memorized <laughs> for the most part. Like I know number 10s are going to be my red. 11 is the dark red. It's called scarlet and red, but when I looked at how they colored their versions in, it basically is like a red and a darker red. So that is how I do mine too. But yeah, you pretty much know like which ones are blue, light blue, blue and dark blue, and then light green, green and dark green. So like I said, each week we will be coloring out of a different book and each week I will color with a different uh, fine liner. I have a number of different coloring mediums figured out as far as this color palette for the Belba family books. So this week we're working with the Inconics, Arteza Inconics. When I first started coloring in these books, I always colored with the twine markers. And I do love the toy markers <laughs> in these books also. But I thought we'd only color with one Arteza product. And so I decided to use the Inconics. So then the other favorite that I have been using is my Shuttle Art fine liners and they have been working awesome i think that's what i did or no i think it's my other book yeah these are all uh the inconics um the other mandala book book one i have been working with my shuttle art it's a 100 set of the shuttle art fine liners and yeah they work great and then I do have the Limoche dual tip water-based uh, markers. Um, and I do not have the colors picked out yet. But I am going to do that this weekend. And so we will be using those one week. And then finally, whoops, Statler has fine liners 
and they have, um, I have a 50 set of, they're called the Statler Tri Plus Color, and they're not quite a fine liner. They're not real thick. <laughs> My hand keeps jerking here. Um, but they're not, you know, they're, hmm, can't remember how big the, you know, how many millimeters the tip is. But I did try it in a couple of pictures, and it does definitely give it a different look. Not quite so much cross stitch like fine liners do in here. Um, so I am going to be, because I do have the, the 50 set of the fine liners too. So when we get to that particular week, I'm going to let you guys decide and let me know if you would prefer the fine liners or if you would like to see how it looks with you know doing it with a little bit of a thicker tipped pen or marker so those will be the four coloring mediums we're going to use the fine liners not quite sure what you know what medium is going to go in what book yet, but um, I th think next week we're going to color out of Woman because that is another one of my favorites. That one or the Cats because I love both of them. I cannot wait to see what Belba family is coming out with next. I just, oh, these are my new love and would you believe in March I have not colored anything else but <laughs> this is all I've done <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm stuck in a rut but I'm having so much fun this past week has been well before I get into all of that how rude of me let me ask you guys how you are doing has everybody had a good week? Anything exciting happen? Have any plans for the weekend? I don't, and like I always say, that's exactly how I like it. <laughs> I have my daughter coming over tomorrow so I can do her taxes. <laughs> it's about the only time I get to see my kids is when they want something. Does that sound familiar? But I guess it's my fault too. I don't contact them as much as I should either. So I guess it does go both ways, doesn't it? Of course, I see Heather on a daily basis during the week, anyhow, because of babysitting the kids. But for my new subscribers, and I know I have gotten a number of new ones out lately. I babysit my grandkids every day. And Madison is three, and Levi is now seven months old. I can't believe that. That is just amazing that he got to be seven months already. Gosh. And you know, he still is not crawling. We thought he'd be such an early crawler because... He would, you know, get up in, on his hands and knees and and rock back and forth. And that's typically a sign of, you know, shortly before they start crawling, right? For all you moms out there. And, no, nope, he gets around, scooting around on his belly so well, he doesn't seem to have a, a want <laughs> to, to want to learn how to crawl. <laughs> it's not... It was working just fine. I don't need to do that. I think I got most of the ones. 
I am sure I have missed some. I always miss some. But instead of taking the time to really look it over, I'm just going to go on to number twos. Just look at diamond painting. I always miss some. So no biggie. You go back and you, you fill it in. So, yes, Mr. Leva is not crawling yet, which is, you know, okay with Grandma. <laughs> Although, like I said, he gets around just as well on his belly. Oh, my gosh. You should see that kid when he spies something off in the distance and he wants it. Oh, boy. You talk about an inchworm. That kid can move. Wow, it's hilarious because Maddie, if she wants him to go somewhere, <laughs> she will take a toy that he likes and she knows he will follow her with, you know, going after this toy. So she'll put it out a few feet in front of him, let him squirm up to it and get it and then she'll take it and she'll put it out a few feet in front of him. <laughs> Let him come get it until he gets to where she wanted him to go. She loves, for some reason, bringing him over here to the kitchen. She likes bringing him into the kitchen. And I'm like, Maddie, I really wish you wouldn't do that because then, you know, I have the water dish for the animals in here and the cat food is, you know, the cat food dish is in there. And of course, he likes to get into both of those. And I can't really, you know, keep the water dish up. The cat food, they don't need down constantly. I know that, but they need access to their water. The way it is, I put the scratch pad up during the day because he likes to go over by the scratch pad. And if the cats have scratched on it, of course, it leaves all that corrugated cardboard pieces all over and yeah he's uh gotten quite full <laughs> if there's a bunch of pieces on there so i usually pick that up when he's crawling around or squirming around i should say so oh yes oh fun 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 for any of you moms out there or grandparents or, you know, aunts, whatever, that have, uh, you know, been around the little ones a lot, you know just what I'm talking about. Yeah, been there, done that. It's been such a long time since mine were little like that, but, oh yes. But then I have to keep telling myself, you know, they do grow up so fast. They stay little so short a time. Oh my gosh, Bob and I were out and about this morning running errands. They had um, this story that came on the radio. It was so funny. There was this woman, and I can't remember where this was. Let me move my tag out of the way. I can't remember where it was, but this woman had this succulent plant up on her windowsill in the kitchen, and she took great pride in how gorgeous this succulent plant was. She took very, very good care of it, watered it religiously, wouldn't even let other people water it. You know, she was the one that was tending to this succulent plant. And years went by and she just kept this plant so beautiful. She was always so proud of her plant. And she thought eventually, because it had been quite a few years since she had gotten it. Now, I think she must have been gifted it or something. So she decided, well, you know, it's been in this same pot for so long. 
you know, maybe I should repot it with some fresh soil. And she, you know, got a new pot, got some potting soil, went to transplant this, you know, succulent plant, took it out of the original container and was going to put it in the new one. You know, had dirt already in the new one and everything. Goes to take it out of the old one. And here it was a fake plant. <laughs> Is that not funny? Here she's been tending and tending and tending and so proud of this plant. <laughs> Thinking she had a real good green thumb, right? And yes, this succulent just looked so gorgeous. I mean, she really took care of this plant. She would even wash its leaves. And as they're telling this story, I'm like, my gosh, this must be a very realistic plant. <laughs> if she is washing these plastic leaves and doesn't notice, that is not real. You know, and that you never get a brown, any brown spots on it. Or, I mean, no matter how good you take care of a plant, you're going to get either some brown leaves, some brown edges, you know, something. And she, you know, to not notice that, I don't know. I don't know. She must have, yeah, really thought she had a green thumb. But I just thought that was hilarious. And like the uh, guy on the radio was saying that gives props to her for admitting this story. Because <laughs> I don't know if I would have told the soul about that. <laughs> I would be so embarrassed. Especially, you know, you wouldn't let anybody else water it or anything. So, yeah, she's religiously watering this plant <laughs> for years. And it's a fake plant. Oh, my God. That sounds like something that would happen to me. But like I said, it must have been pretty realistic looking and feeling if she washed its leaves and everything. Or whatever you want to call them. Does a succulent plant have leaves? I don't know. Whatever you call it, I guess. Yeah, that that was hilarious. So I was laughing this morning in the car here and that. <laughs> and just the way this guy was telling the story made it even funnier. And he's just a laugh in a way, and you know, laughter can be contagious, right? Just like yawns. Why are yawns so contagious? Oh, Heather came here the other morning. I wasn't tired whatsoever. She started yawning. So did I. I'm like, why? Why? <laughs> why do you yawn when somebody else does? And you know they've done studies on it? Yes, they have actually spent money trying to figure out why yawns are contagious. And you know what? They have no idea. <laughs> uh, do you do that too? When somebody yawns, you just automatically end up yawning yourself? Uh, I always do. I don't necessarily get tired, but yeah, I just end up yawning. I once heard that yawn, that you yawn, not necessarily just because you're tired. Sometimes you just yawn because, how did they say it? Your brain or your body just needed the extra oxygen or something. And by yawning, you got that extra oxygen in. I don't know. Who knows if that's true? I sure would like to know, you know, some of these studies that these people do. It's like, how do you know that? You know, I can't even come up with an example of what I'm talking about right now. Number one, it's unbelievable what they can spend millions of dollars on studying. Number two, it's like, okay, how did you come up with that one? 
like things like an animal thinks or things from way back when that they figured this out and this out and it's like how do you know that <laughs> really <laughs> oh yeah what is everybody else working on is anybody joining in on the color along i know belba family is getting pretty popular they are a very new company just starting up last year and i believe it was last year and my gosh they have grown leaps and bounds in a year Wow, but there are so many of us that love, especially since they introduced me to this X method of coloring. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm in love. <laughs> this is my absolutely, positively, my new favorite way of coloring. And so any small squared coloring book I can get my hands on now I want it <laughs> there's not a whole lot out there on the market though there are some and I've actually tried this X method in some books that the squares aren't quite this small and it does work it's of course the pictures are a little more pixelated these pictures because the squares are so small the detail in them oh like in the the one t entitled woman those come out looking so awesome or the passion one and the cat i mean all of them the detail is just wow incredible i don't know how they go about making these books I'm assuming they take a picture, you know, that they have and it's, you know, computer generated into pixels of, you know, somehow. Um, but, yeah, so they had asked, you know, for input from me as far as what I thought we would like to see in future books. So that's why I said I'm really curious to see what they're going to come out with next. Sun Life Drawing, too. I had kind of given them the tip that maybe they would want to look into doing some books like this. Wouldn't that be awesome? Eee. Yeah, so I'm kind of curious to see what Sun Life Drawing is going to come out with next, too, because they're my favorites also. So I've had some really good color alongs to participate in this year. <laughs> Sun Life Drawing and now Belba Family. My favorites. So is anybody bored with me putting all these X's down? <laughs> I guess it's no worse than if I would be coloring them in solid, right? We're still going to see the, the mandala, the design appearing. Now on the very top and outside rows, I'm extra, a little extra careful because of course you don't want to go out of lines. <laughs> All right, are we done with the twos already? I told you the light colors go kind of fast. <laughs> All right, I don't see any number threes, so I don't think there's any beige in here. And then four, we get into orange. So I'm going to keep these colors out because, like I said, I'm sure I missed something. Number four, I use 1112, which is orange. <laughs> Isn't that appropriate? Okay, I'm going to take a sip. Um, I had bourbon chicken for supper and it was, <coughs> excuse me, kind of salty, so now I'm really thirsty. 
Okay, isn't this looking cool so far? Of course, you don't see it as a whole because I'm zoomed in. But let's get number four in here. And you can see now we're getting in with some darker colors and uh, then I start slowing down a little. <laughs> Probably because you can, you can see the lines a little bit more. But as you can see, you definitely don't have to make perfect X's in order for this to turn out great because you're not going to be looking at absolutely every single little X when you look at the picture when it's done. Because heaven knows my X's are far from perfect. Now this particular pen is nice and juicy and thick lined. You know, the tip seems good. And so this one I can color with pretty good. But like I said, you start getting into just, let's see, with the Inconics, mainly I think it was the black, but there might have been another color where the tip just seemed a little finer or it just, just wasn't quite as juicy or something. I don't know. And it could be because I use the black quite a bit. Um, that it's, I don't know, maybe it's running dry. I did order a, because I was looking for a four millimeter black fine liner. And the Artezas do have a, is it a four pack or a six pack? I think a six pack of um, the four millimeter black fine liners. So I did order that because the Shuttle Arts also, the black was running dry. And so I am going to put one of the Arteza fine liners in with my Shuttle Arts for the black. The rest of them are all pretty good. And the Shuttle Arts work really great because they're all really nice and juicy like the Inconics. I really like those. And so I think next week we are, like I said, going to be working with the Shuttle Art fine liners. <laughs> Bella must not. Bella's kind of woofing in the other room. Must be somebody walking by. I have a flip through video to do yet. Can you believe? I only, I know, sit down now, sit down so nobody hurts themselves. I have one flip through video to do. One. There's a two I forgot. Sometimes I wait until the end to fill in all the ones I've missed because, you know, like right there, I'll pick up that yellow, fill in that number two that I missed. And because it's sitting right here next to me, that's not a big deal. Sometimes I put the pens back in the case right away. So, you know, then you got to go digging through the case and get it back out. So it's a little bit more of a pain, but you know, sometimes I'll do that and then I'm working a little bit farther. Oh, there's another two that I missed. <laughs> so I'm to get it back out again. So yeah, if I have the pens back in the case for one reason or another, I don't go back and fill in any that I missed until the end. <laughs> because yeah, I know that uh, I probably, if I missed one, I probably missed more. Let's see how far we can get on this picture today. Because after this color, let's see, there's no fives. 
I don't see sixes, but we have sevens and eights. It's sevens and eights. What were those colors? Browns, I believe. Yeah, brown and dark brown. Um, so those will be darker colors. Those will take a little bit. I, I'm a little bit more particular with those dark colors. But as you can see, it does not take long to do. And it is so relaxing. I love doing this. While I am catching up on other YouTube videos, the color tubers, I have a number of them to catch up on tonight. I meant to record this this morning and get some other videos done. And I just, hmm, I was super tired and I don't know why I shouldn't have been. And then I had such a whopping headache on top of it that when Bob and I got back from town, I laid back in the chair <laughs> for a while. So I did not get to recording until late now tonight. So I am going to try to get this up yet tonight. What time is it? It's already almost seven, so yeah, maybe it won't be up tonight. <laughs> By the time I record my other, I have a little bit longer of another video I wanna get done. And then that flip through. So yeah, probably won't be up tonight. So you're probably going to first see this today is Saturday. So you probably are first going to see this tomorrow on Sunday. And because I don't have many flip throughs to do, next week I will not have a video for you guys every day. So I'll kind of space them out and give you a video every other day. Because I'm only going to have a few for a change. Usually I, you know, have a review or I do have one review and that's what I'm going to be recording next. And it may take a little bit to record, so... At least I hope to get it done yet tonight because it's it is getting late for me anyhow to be recording. I know others record quite late, but we'll see. I'm going to try to get it done yet tonight because then I know it's done. And like I said, my daughter's coming tomorrow for taxes, so... I have no idea what time she's coming. Would be nice to know that. But yeah, some kind of upsetting things happened this week that I won't go into, but kind of had me bummed out and just didn't, you know, have the energy to do much. So you know, sitting down and just relaxing with my Belba family coloring books just really helped, really hit the spot, as they say. Kind of made me forget for a while, you know, and, and upsetting things or, you know, depressing things hits all of us differently, right? You know, there are some things that really can bum a person out, whether you have anxiety, whether you have depression issues or not. But for those of us who do have depression issues, it can affect us even more so. And my depression is very well maintained with medications for the most part. I am really lucky that after much trial and error, 
a few years worth of trial and error we finally found the right combination of meds at the right quantity and uh, yeah so like I said for the most part mine is maintained pretty well but yeah there's there are still times you know when things just really hit <laughs> And I guess this week was just one of them. Hate it when that happens, right? I am still using my old wired mic. Um, the people I have been in contact with um, in regard to my new wireless mic are very helpful. Their support is awesome, and they gave me something to try. And I have not gotten an opportunity to try it yet, and I didn't want to take the time to do some test videos and copy them over to the computer. Because last time I, the first time I tried out that wireless mic, I did a couple test videos, listened to them on my phone. They sounded great. So I recorded, gosh, what was it, like four or five videos, flip-throughs, I think I did a color and chat, um, uploaded them to my computer, or copied them over, I should say, and listened to them, and they sounded like crap. They were so distorted when... I talked louder whatsoever, you know. When I talked quiet, it was fine. But once I talked louder, it got distorted. And so when I asked you guys how the audio sounded, everybody was saying, oh, it sounded great, it was crystal clear. And I'm like, really? Boy, that's not what I heard. <laughs> I heard something totally different. And finally, I did have a subscriber that said, you know, I'm. she was so nice about it. She says, I'm sorry, but I really, you know, liked the other microphone better. That, you know, this one seemed to distort when, you know, I spoke louder. And, you know, I said, finally, somebody that heard the same thing I did. <laughs> And uh, so then I, because, you know, you guys had me really questioning whether I actually heard something bad in the sound or not. And so I went back and I listened to the videos that I uploaded and I'm like, no, those are awful. <laughs> I mean, not that you couldn't understand me, you could, but yeah. And, uh when I contacted the manufacturer <coughs> because this wired mic and the wireless mics are made by the same company and it's I believe it's pronounced Rode R-O-D-E and yeah their customer service is great and they asked for a sampling of an audio so I I sent them a, a video my one of my YouTube videos and they said, yeah, it sounded like my volume, my sound was maxing out decibel-wise. And it was outputting too much to from the transmitter to the receiver. So they gave me something to try because there's a DB button, must stand for decibels, that you, there's three different settings. And I didn't try one of the other settings. So I have to try that and see if that helps. I'm assuming it's going to. I just, like I said, I didn't want to take the time tonight because it's getting so late. Um, oh, we do have some sixes. Okay. So, and that was, I think that's just brown. No, six is red brown. All right. So six, I'm actually using 118 Autumn Red because it actually does look like a red brown <laughs> or a brown red whichever way you want to look at it 
So, yeah, that's what I decided to look or to use. See, now I'm getting to the darker colors, and for some reason, I'm just not as, I don't know. It starts looking messier, and I think, like I said, I think it's just because you can see the lines better. <laughs> Excuse me. So, yeah, but like I said, it does not have to be perfect. Even if you were to color these in solid, there's no way, you know, these the lines are very thin which on the one hand is nice because when you're done coloring this in you don't see those lines so much I mean it would be it's actually better this way especially when doing the X method that you don't see those lines in between quite so much um, but if you were coloring them in solid it would be a little bit harder, I think, because it would be hard to stay within the lines. So, like I said, good and bads to both. Okay, number seven is brown, and I use 164 Walnut Brown. 164, that's not it. There we go. I am going to go ahead and link this book down below in case you would like to get it and maybe participate in the Belba Family Color Along if you do not have one of their books yet. I would highly suggest this one, especially if you like mandalas. And like I said, I love the fact that the animal, which is always in the middle of the mandala. Um, you don't know what the animal is. You know, even when I look at what colors are in here and stuff, it's really hard to figure out. <laughs> which is cool. Okay. Sevens. Gosh, I was going to say something, and now I can't think what it was. I will go ahead and link these Ink Onyx. They have a, a couple different sets, set, different size sets. Um, and I'll, I'll also link that paint splatter pencil case because you can use that for all kinds of fine liners as you can see and they work out great I like the pencil cases where at least I should I should uh, back up I like pencil cases that have individual loops for pencils but I do like pencil cases where they have the bigger loops where you can fit in multiple pencils within the same loop because they do work great for fine liners and, and things like that because if you've ever tried to fit fine liners in a pencil case you know that it's kind of hard to do they're just not as skinny as a pencil and I actually do have my shuttle arts in a pencil case and what I do is I put two pens together, you know, each in a loop, and then I skip a loop. And then I'll put two pens in and skip a loop. And that works good too. And another reason why it's kind of hard to fit them in there, and how in the world did I miss? Whoops, we need number one. Um... Another reason why it's hard for them to fit in there is because of the caps. <laughs> you know, the caps make it... Now, these aren't bad because these caps are very thin and they don't have the clip-on. Which, if you ask me, fine liners, they don't need a clip on the cap. They're just a hindrance and it makes it 
much harder getting them in and out of the loops in the pencil case. So I do not like fine liners that have the clips on the caps. I just, I find them to be a pain. And like I said, who really uses those clips? It does, on the one hand, prevent them from rolling on your desk a little bit. I, I understand that. But <laughs> I think they're more a hindrance than anything else. Because, yeah, you really can only get those pins in and out of those elastic loops one way. My gosh. Good heavens, Lisa. See, and I'll do that. They're right next to each other, and I'll miss it. And I bet you you guys noticed that when I was coloring, didn't you? And you're like, Lisa, are you blind? See, I always start down at the bottom here when I have my dark colors. Am I on camera yet? Yeah. And number seven is getting to be, you know, a pretty, pretty dark one because it's close to black. And my eyes, oh, Lately, they've really been driving me crazy. I have in my left eye a very large floater. And I don't know if you guys have floaters. They're very, very common. And I've had them all my life. But they're typically those smaller black floaters, you know, that as you move your eye around the little floaters, you know, the black things kind of float with your eye. And it's just little pieces of material that's in the vitreous fluid in around your eyeball. And, or what comprises your eyeball. And there's really nothing they can do about it. Well, now I had developed a very large come to find out it is just a floater also but it's a very large like a white one <coughs> and it can really wreak havoc on my vision in my left eye and for some reason this one moves in the opposite direction of where I turn my eye. So if I look off to the left, this floater goes off to the right. It's really weird. And yeah, it, it especially bothers me when I'm doing diamond painting because you're constantly looking down at your tray to get a drill and then up at your canvas, down at the tray, up at the canvas. And so this floater is constantly floating in my way where at least when I'm coloring, my eyes are staying more focused, but it still, it still can get in my way sometimes. And then at other times, my vision just blurs over and I got to blink a few times. I think I, I had the beginning of cataracts for a couple of years now, and I think age is creeping up with me, and I think I'm going to have to get them looked at again because yeah my vision is getting kind of hazy looking so it's hell getting old my uh, parents both had problems with cataracts too so oh my heavens lisa told you i should have just waited till the end to fill in those number ones because I keep finding more. Why was it with the number ones? I must have been in a hurry to get those done. I'll probably come across some others too yet. Oh my gosh, we've been working on this for an hour? Wow, we. So yes, I can definitely see where I'm going to have to do some off camera. I wasn't sure how far we'd get today, but I think we'll 
finish up number sevens because we're almost done here. And then I'll do like the eights and, you know, get some of this done inside so that uh, we then can finish it up on camera together if possible and it depends on how my days go during the week and how tired i am i would like to get a color and chat done during the week too th so that we could finish this picture off within the same week otherwise i'm only going to be coloring two pictures with you guys for this month if each picture takes two color and chats and two weekends you know there's only four weekends in a month <laughs> so yeah that would only give us two pictures but i guess you know it i guess it's more the chatting than actually the number of pictures you get done or not <laughs> i guess i don't care how many parts uh you know uh, a picture takes um but it would be kind of nice to get through a number of different books and like i said i want to get through four different books and four different coloring mediums so either i'm going to completely finish this off camera or i'm going to try to come back during the week even if it's just a half hour video and finish it up with you guys maybe that's what i'll plan on doing and depending on how the week goes, we'll determine what night I go ahead and record and finish this up. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do quite a bit of this on my own. I will just leave, let's see, what's the last color? We got 18s here, 16 and 18s it looks like. So I think I'll do up through 14 and I'll see how much looks like there's all the inside here is like 16 and 18s and 14s um so yeah i'll do the ones in the corner i'll uh, come back during the week then we'll finish this one up and then next weekend we will go to the woman book and we are going to color with the shuttle art fine liners so okay yeah that's i guess what i'll plan on doing i will come back during the week and we'll finish this one up i'll do it I can probably tonight. I'll go ahead and work on this one yet tonight. Um, and then we'll uh, come back maybe like midweek and finish it up. So I like how, I hope you like how it's looking so far. I hope I kind of showed now how the X method works to make it look like cross stitch. I think it really looks neat. I, I now like this look so much better than when it's colored in solid. Um, I just think it looks really neat and yes it's so much fun to do so okay I hope you enjoyed watching this um, if you did please hit that thumbs up button really helps the channel don't forget to subscribe if you are new to my channel and hit the notification bell so you know when I put out new videos I hope everybody's having a great weekend and as always happy coloring bye guys